Okay, thanks for your interest in downloading this uh, this KPI sheet. I hope this is going to help you, you know, uh, get a better understanding of your of your targets and of your results that you're getting, and, and to help improve your, you know, acknowledgement of getting a better R, 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 ROAS. So uh, take a look at this. So let's let's keep this simple here. Let's do the campaign name. So let's say that your campaign name is just going to be uh, campaign number one, and this is the ideal time frame. So I just updated this. So today is December the 16th on Friday, and let's say we've been running this since December the 1st. So I'll just put December 1, December 16. All right, so this is what you can steal from from your data, from Facebook, or from Google AdWords, whatever platform you're using, um, the number of impressions that you're getting from this time frame. So let's just say that we've pushed this out and we've gotten 19,000 impressions so far. And an impression is when how many times your ad is shown to an uh, individual person. Uh, link clicks. How many clicks did, you, did this ad get? So let's say that out of 19,000 impressions, it got 924 clicks. Then out of that, if you're tracking leads, then uh, th this is what we would use for, for leads. If you're tracking e-commerce, then we would ideally put uh, add to carts, um, initial checkouts, um, and definitely uh, purchases, and then upsells, cross sales, down sales if we have any. But that's how we would kind of structure it. But since this is a service-based campaign, we're going to just you know measure this as leads, um, applications if that's applicable to you, appointments if that's applicable to you and then obviously closes or sales. So out of that, out of 924 clicks, let's say that we've got about 81 leads. And then out of 81 leads, let's say a lead is someone who fills out a name, email, phone. If you're using an application form to kind of pre-qualify them, I highly suggest you do that. But if you are, then that's how many applications we would put out of 81 leads, uh, you know, 25 people filled out an application form. Or if you're not using application forms, just put, you know, 81 leads, 81 applications. And then, of course, appointments. If you're using appointments, the, um, how many people are booking an appointment out of 81 leads? So let's say out of 81 leads, we've got uh, 26 appointments that were booked. And then finally, out of the 26 appointments that were booked and that showed up, uh, we, let's say that we've got, you know, maybe seven sales or closes. And then finally, 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 how much did we spend on this individual campaign to, you know, get 81 leads, 26 appointments, and seven sales? Let's say that we spent uh, three grand. All right, so let's remove this one so that it doesn't confuse you. All right, so what we just put is we we set up a campaign, right? We ran it and we've got data from it. We're gonna input the data in here, time frame, impressions, clicks, and leads. And then from there, appointments and sales. Now, finally, the amount spent. It's going to calculate everything for us now. So if you scroll over to the right, you're going to see uh, how much we're spending per lead, how much we're spending per appointment or per set, which is appointment, set. set sets and appointments are the same thing. And then how much we're spending per sale or per purchase. Sales and purchases are, purchases are obviously the same. So you can really see 
ideally what your cost is over here. Then over here, you can see your conversion rates and percentages. So for example, this is the standard goal that we want to hit. 25 on the front end and definitely 50 or more on the back end. And then after the set, we typically like to see at least a 20% 20% from set, meaning out of let's say out of 100 appointments, 20 of them will become a cell, 20%. So we know that our 25% goal is what we want to hit. So it's at 9%. Now this is not that bad. However, we want this to be above 25%. However, if if we are if we're getting a 9% conversion rate on the front end, whether it's a lead form or whether it's a landing page, if we're getting a 9% on that and we're getting let's say a 27 percent on the purchase so that's kind of not that's not that's not really that good if we're getting let's say let's say we're getting this let's say we're getting a 65 percent on the purchase well that nine percent ain't bad because if we try to fix this to hit 25 percent and we do, let's say we hit 181, it might give us a higher percentage here, but this might give us a lower percentage here. And we do not want to optimize from front, from top of the funnel to bottom of the funnel. We want to always optimize from bottom of the funnel to the top of the funnel. Look at the cost per sale. The cost per sale is $1,000. That means if a customer is paying $500 to me, I am losing money. I'm losing $500. So no, I don't want to do that. I would prefer my bottom of the funnel is higher and my top of the funnel is lower. So therefore, look at this. If my cost per purchase, even though my cost per lead might be $37, and even though my cost per appointment might be $115, look at my cost per sale. My cost per sale is 176. So if they're paying me $500, I'm profiting you know, three hundred and twenty twenty four dollars pretty much. I'm profiting twenty three hundred and twenty three dollars actually. I'm profiting three hundred and twenty three dollars and some change. And that's a good thing. I'm profiting three hundred and some dollars. So if my ROAS is, you know, roughly at two hundred, three hundred percent, then I can increase I can increase my budget in increments. I'm not going to want to double it. If I double it, my cost per purchase will likely be uh, maybe even a little bit more than double. That's how that's how Facebook works, and Google works too. But if I increment, if I increased it in increments, let's say four thousand, and then let's say five thousand five hundred, and then let's say seven thousand. If I increase it in increments, if I increase it in increments, let's say it goes to four, and then let's say this goes to twenty eight, my actual cost per sale, even though it got a little bit more expensive, it's still profitable in a huge way. I'm still making good money and I can still scale this and sometimes when you scale it even more sometimes when you scale it even more the cost per sale goes down it goes down 
And the reason their algorithm worked like this is because the more money you spend, the more it can leverage the data that it's getting and the algorithm can work better because it's more people, more impressions, more data, and it can find your ideal buyers more easily versus than shoestring budgets and it needle picks who it thinks are going to work out. And most of the time, especially in the beginning, it's random. And in the beginning when it's random, it's like it's sometimes a hit or miss. Sometimes you might see this yourself. Some weeks might be good weeks and some weeks might be bad weeks. And that's just kind of how it's randomly picking. But with more money, more spend, you're actually able to scale. You're actually able to uh, capitalize off of the algorithm itself, which is what it's made for. And you're, you're able to, you know, definitely get uh, more cheaper costs, more acquisitions, more volume, more volume. So this calculator is great. I, I hope you use it. Um, definitely try to increase your percentages. So let's say if, if your percentages, we can go back to this. Let's say if your percentages is... Um, is less start from the bottom of the funnel first 20% 12% so I want to increase the set ratio to the sale I want to be able to close better follow up better I want to make sure this gets to 20% once this gets to 20% now I can focus on my set ratio which is that 32% so from lead to appointment I need to fix that funnel that step of the funnel and you know, um, follow up better, uh, be more aggressive with my follow-ups, give more value, um, allow my customer journey to be longer. Don't just create a seven-day drip and quit. You know, follow up more longer than that because people will still set appointments months later. You know, um, and then once that gets to 50%, then I can focus on the top of the funnel and then that's the click to lead ratio and I do not want to lose like if you focus if you if this is at 20% and let's just put this at 20% or more uh, I don't know what 20% is so like all right six I guess give or take so if this is at 20% and then I fix this is that let's say this is at um, 50% and then I go to this if I touch this and then if this hurts and goes down by the way you see how it went down I got more appointments but still the sales stayed the same yeah that's not good it go it means it went down and this should be going up so if I fix this and don't close more that's on me. I need to figure out what I did in here to cause my sales to drop. Did I set appointments and lose my my pre-qualification process? Did I set appointments for the wrong type of people that I shouldn't be talking to? You know. And then if this stays the same, if that stays the same, and then if this goes up and then this hurts, if this hurts, this hurts too. Because once you hurt one part, it's just a numbers game. The rest of the part is like dominoes. Less appointments mean less sales. So more appointments mean more potential sales. So definitely you want to monitor the bottom as you work your way to the top of the funnel. And when you work your way to the top of the funnel, our ideal goal is to get this to 25%. This to 50% or more this to 50% or more, this to 20% or more. That's our goal. Once we hit that goal, now it makes financial sense to double, triple our budget, but only when we hit that goal. We need to hit those goals first and optimize our funnel. And it it's a process. It, does, it requires more than just changing the ads. It requires a much more than that. Sometimes you've got to work on certain parts like sometimes the ad is fine it worked before the ads fine 
is other parts in your system that needs to be fixed. And so what we could do to help you with this, if you're interested, we can kind of help you identify what part of your funnel that needs her work. We can fix that part of your funnel for you. Um, I'd be more than happy to take a look and audit your account, take a look at your funnel as well, take a look at your campaigns as well, and then just help you generate, you know, more purchases, more performance out of your campaign so that you're getting a better return on ad spend. Um, it requires effort. It requires work on both parts. However, this is something that we do professionally, and we manage clients' accounts and help them scale their campaigns to the point where they start off with a budget with, of us of just a little bit, and then they scale really, really aggressively, and then they're able to spend much more than they ever could because they're getting more out of it. If you're interested in that, if you're interested in us showing you what we could do, click the button below, hop on a quick 15, 20-minute call with you. I'll, I'll take a look to see what I can do to help you, and then I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.